analysis, you explain to us about saying about you know, cutting people's salaries and cutting people's um, allowances down. <coughs> this administration, when we took over, took away 5.4 million in, in fat cap bonuses to chief executives and officers in this council. So we don't take any lectures off anybody about reducing salaries. But the reality is, that's what we did. So you're talking about, you're not talking about doing that. You're not talking about reducing services and investments into neighbourhoods, investments in, in, into uh, city watch and see, I know, I know the services. And you, you know, as I said, you're making a obvious claim about that. The collection fees are bulky box. We're not charging for bulky box. But I couldn't support that amendment because it's it's not even a Intelligent uh, amendment. And you know what my real uh, disappointment is? And I would have done it if I was a councillor and able to move an amendment to your amendment. Because I would have said the simplest way to save money is to get you four to retire and save the money. <laughs>
suggested and what Tom said in his answer to Prince and moving the amendment is we are creating a bigger council tax base at this stage, at an earlier stage, to make sure that we can actually have some credible income from council tax in future years. And the money that we're raising now can go back into the pot to protect the most vulnerable, as is the aim of this council's administration. So I don't think our budget is reasonable. We have very good grounds for sort of proposing it, and it's a shame that we cannot see that and accept it. Thank you all. Okay, so I'm going to conduct a card vote for this. Um, Chief of Deputy. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Banks? Yes. Councillor Barrington? Yes. Councillor Beaumont? Yes. Councillor Ellis Bennett? Yes. Councillor Ruth Bennett? Yes. Councillor Brandt? Yes. Councillor Brennan? Yes. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Calvert? Yes. Councillor Castles? Yes. Councillor Clark? Yes. Councillor Conception? Yes. Councillor Connor? Yes. Councillor Corbett? Yes. Councillor Corrigan? Yes. Councillor Crofts? Councillor Crown? Yes. Councillor Cummings? Yes. Councillor Davis? Yes. Councillor Dean? Yes. Councillor Didsbury? Yes. Councillor Dowling? Yes. Councillor Foxley? Yes. Councillor Frankel? Yes. Councillor Francis? Yes. Councillor Roy Glenn? Yes. Councillor Groves? Yes. Councillor Hanratty? Yes. Councillor Hanson? Councillor Hennigan, okay. Councillor Hunt, okay. Councillor Hurley, Councillor Jennings, Councillor Jolly, okay. Councillor Jones, okay. Councillor Juarez, okay. Councillor Kelly, okay. Councillor Kemp, okay. Councillor Kennedy, okay. Councillor King, okay. Councillor Knight, okay. Councillor Barry Brusher, okay. Councillor Joanne Brusher, okay. Councillor Lavelle, okay. Councillor Mapleton, okay. Councillor McCulley, okay. Councillor McIntosh, Councillor McClendon, yes. Councillor Miller, yes. Councillor Mitchell, yes. Councillor Moore, yes. Councillor Morrison, yes. Councillor Mumby, yes. Councillor Murray, yes. Councillor Nicholas, yes. Councillor Noakes, yes. Councillor Tricia O'Brien, yes. Councillor Anna O'Brien, yes. Councillor Rachel O'Brien, yes. Councillor Orr, yes. Councillor Parsons, Councillor Prendergast, yes. Councillor Prince, yes. Councillor Kinnear, Councillor Radford, yes. Councillor Raby, yes. Councillor Rasmussen, yes. Councillor Roberts, yes. Councillor Robertson Collins, yes. Councillor Robinson, yes. Councillor Ross, yes. Councillor Rothery, yes. Councillor Simon, yes. Councillor Small, yes. Councillor Spurrow, yes. Councillor Sullivan. Yes. Councillor Sun, yes. Councillor Jed Taylor, yes. Councillor Jackie Taylor. Councillor Thomas, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Tootle, yes. Councillor Alan Walker, yes. Councillor Sue Walker, yes. Councillor Walton, yes. Councillor Weston, yes. Councillor Wolfson, yes. Councillor Wood, yes. Councillor Woodhouse, and the Lord Mayor. Thank you. The result of the First Amendment card vote was four people for and 76 against with no abstentions. Okay, so we move on now to the Second Amendment. So the Second Amendment is going to see...
And so I'm seeking clarification on whether I should set out whether that applies to the council's element of the overall council tax setting or the overall council tax amount that should be collected. And regardless of which one it sets out, that an amendment which tries to set that out should either set out the percentage that is asked for the reduction or the total amounts in each band. Any other Thank you. 
assumption uh, in terms of the spirit again of the uh, content of the amendments would be that that would be staffing and therefore that would be a reduction through a service review of the number of staff and therefore the cost of the running of the office. Sorry. Uh, again, to be consistent, that also assumes nine months worth of the staff staff. Uh, 
um, a budget being moved by the Labour Party. Not everything, but we do agree with a lot of it. We agree in particular, for example, with uh, the, the movements being made by Council of Rome as the cabinet member for health and social care. Really important moves to improve and extend the adult care hubs, because that's the only way to solve the pressures on the National Health Service. But really good initiatives like that have been swamped by many of the things that the Mayor of Liverpool has been talking about, where frankly the figures just do not add up. What about the super duper pooper scooper campaign? One, uh, no, I'm not going to do that again. I was quite impressed with that the first time. What the, the mayor says, this is a really brilliant scheme. It will pay for itself. No, it won't. Let's, if that had gone in as a budget uh, option, I checked with the uh, director of resources. Uh, actually, the maximum fine that could have been levied is £1,000. But that depends on the court setting it, and that's not all profit. The slowest council tax which would have been given to the year's rebate is 1,007. If it had been someone in a mansion, it would have been 3,000. So there was a scheme that wouldn't have paid. We've heard from the Mayor today, supported by Councillor Prendergast, the former leader of the council, that the way to get out of some of these problems is to build executive homes. And he couldn't be further from the truth. If we look for example, because I've done the figures at the old Gatica Comprehensive site, look at what Retro Homes brings in by way of council tax. Look then at what would have happened if we had created the two bedroom flats that people in that area want to move out of the existing homes, and if we'd have built three bedroom homes instead of the, the retro urban sprawl. We would have brought in 50% more council tax on the Gatica Comprehensive site than going for the executive homes so loved by the mayor and Redford. Again, another simple example of even if you take your shoes and socks off, you're not getting this right. We move from the council tax ceaselessly to a lottery, which we were going to be told would be announced in mid-January. The lottery became scratch cards, the scratch cards haven't appeared. So time and time again, we weren't dealing with the serious issues. But there are two serious issues that I just want to address briefly now. Mayor Anderson made some very good points about how we've got to change the service delivery for libraries. He should be good at that speech, because he's made the same speech about libraries five years running. And the fact is we have yet, yet to actually conduct a major review of our libraries to reshape them, to meet the needs of the modern age. That's just a fact. It hasn't happened. And that's why our libraries are a threat today, because no one has been looking for the long term future of the libraries. Let's look, you, you laugh at this one. Let's look at our parks. We were told by the mayor, and I have no reason to believe that he was wrong, that by the end of this month, we wouldn't have a single penny to keep our parks going. Now, I'm delighted that there are no budget options for taking money out of the parks. What I'm not so delighted about is the fact that we have yet to consider in our parks across the city, with the exception of Croxford Park, which of course has particular circumstances, how are we are going to change the way we run, support, manage and fund our parks? That is something that must be done. We've been ready to do it for almost two years since Councillor Mumby suggested to the Neighbourhood Services Committee we set up two working groups to look at Coldstones Park and to look at Walton, me, Walton Bull Park. They talk and absolutely nothing happens. So, let's have a look briefly at the motion we're moving today. Now, I will be the first to admit that this is the wrong way around. What we need to do now is to accept that
that things are changing in the governance of this city, the way the city region is running, and the reaction we as a council, along with the other five councils, must make to those government changes. In fact, what I'm moving today is partly what had been moved at some stage by the Labour Party had Mayor Anderson become Mayor Mayor Anderson. Because I know, as well as you do, that the proposal was not to have three mayors for this city, but to have two. For the Mayor of Liverpool to become the city region mayor and to take the mayoralty out as he left. That was what was going to happen. You know it, but I do. But what I'm doing is recognising the reality that this city council will not be as powerful as it was, will not need to play the leading part in the city region in the way that it did. It's, well, uh, I, we sat here quite near behaving, and there are people on there who just do not know how to behave. But I'm finishing now, so I'm not uh, too, uh, too bothered. My Lord Mayor, the reality of life is that things have changed. Since we set up the structure we've got, both the staffing structure and the political structure, things have changed, things have moved on. We have to recognise that. We can do better than we did by recognising the new realities, coming up with a governance system that works, coming up with a managerial system that works, and saving a few more in the meantime. And I can tell you now, we will be making a number of proposals at the annual meeting of the Council, which will actually bring to effect some of these things. My Lord Baron, I beg to move. Okay. Right. Right. That was an edifying. That's probably the worst experience I've had in this chamber over the last year. Um, okay, Councillor Crowe. Lord Mayor, um, we will not be supporting this amendment. Um, the urgent issue that is facing this council is the drastic reduction in funding, which is leading to many services based on the prospect of having their essential funding withdrawn. This motion does nothing to address this. Um, I agree with some of the proposed savings, I don't agree with all of them, but my main problem is that this amendment ploughs any savings that it does make into a minute council tax uh, reduction. It has nothing to do with helping to save any of the threatening services of the council, rather it's just about achieving a small reduction in council tax, which uh, they've obviously um, calculated will be well received in their time awards.
for the director of children's services and all the other people that are working in that department, which would be a wonderful useful thing for you to do. So I would just like, I'd just like to say that I think the thing that you're thing that the things that you're suggesting on are, are, are things that the comments that we make that see the closure of coal pits, absolutely the closure of beastly stables, the closure of the miniature railway. The, the, the fact that you stand against the Invest to Work programme would mean that the amount of money that we'd lose from that would mean we'd have to close down our early intervention programme. So there's nothing that you're offering in any serious way that adds to the kind of things and the challenges that we need to do in terms of running the administration in the city. And the only conclusion I can draw from that is that the city is not safe in your hands.
supporting those women in our city. Um, what the Lib Dems tend to do, and they've shown in the past, I can remember an example very well, of using money where we did have money in the wrong way. So instead of supporting the most, the most vulnerable in the city, if you remember, Joe will remember this, sorry, the mayor, remember they spent 2.4 million on, on a capital culture one stop shop. Do you remember? Both yeah. 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 so NRF funding and SR, SRB funding. But not only that, they lost half a million in the first year and an extra three quarters of a million in the next year, which by my calculation would take it up to 3.6 and they go off massively. <coughs> The point to that story is that if you're using money well, you should be able to get people into work and you should be able to protect them. The outputs and the outcomes that they had from that capital culture shop in terms of um, formerly unemployed getting into work was the grounds of two people. Two people. <coughs> the 2.4 million rising to 3.6. So what we've done here very, very carefully is not only invest to earn and invest to save, but also, as Joe said before, we've got the 3.1 into system support scheme, which has a direct impact on keeping people out of children's homes and foster care and in with their own families and fed. We put 3 million into protecting the people on the, on the lowest um, wages using our capital tax support scheme. Again, I think we're the only local version of the country to do that. Bristol's given up, as far as I understand that. So Liverpool stands alone on that. It's a proud record. And also, we have to top up the discretionary housing payments, and we do that to 0.65. We now just recently found out that we're short of 1.7 million off the government, which is putting us in a desperate position because that is a direct impact to the benefit cap. And therefore, we could have a lot of people finding that without our support, which of course we have above it to 1.7 million, they will have to pay extra to put them in hospitals, which we haven't got, which costs us 400 pounds a week instead of 40. So we've got a problem because of directly because of what the, what the government is doing. So I just want to say that I'm supporting this budget, our budget, not the amendment, because it's based on the right priorities. And it also is the best that we can do in these particular circumstances while we've got this cruel government still in place. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Mr.
exactly that issue in relation to Coolstones Park and Stanley Park. But it's a lot of work. And thanks to your party, in coalition with the Conservatives, we've got you know, probably a third of the officers in parts of my portfolio that we had when we moved into the council. And you're responsible for that. So any delays are down to you. And if you don't understand why it's a difficult part of work with often a third of the quarter of the staff that we've got, then you really shouldn't be an elected council, and certainly not a leader of the group. So we're continuing to deliver innovation in environmental enforcement, and I just wish you would throw the papers across the room, because I just want to wish you get an FDA. <laughs> it would make my day. Um, but we will continue to work on libraries, we'll continue to work on parks, we'll continue promoting innovation and savings in every sector of the city, because the city needs it to do. And I just wish for one of you to sort of Try to do something, Richard. You're an elegant speaker. I think, though, I'll be my colleague from the start of the You're actually a decent person. Oh, I wish you Thank you. 